Okay, I, go ahead. Uh, Chris and Aaron from <laughs> Oregon, and uh, we're going to talk about some sweat management, ways to deal with sweat as an amputee under your liner. So one of the things that I do personally is uh, my sock gets a little too tight in the morning to actually wear with a sweat sock. So I will add um, some spray deodorant on my spare skin, and then I'll I'll roll my then uh, I'll roll my liner on over the top of the spray deodorant. It does two things. It keeps the moisture and and I like it keeps your leg as dry as possible and it also makes it not smell as bad because as most of you amputees know, once you take that liner off, not a very pleasant smell. So spray deodorant definitely helps out with that. But during the day, uh, if you're up and at it as much as I am at least, like you're still gonna lose volume and you're still gonna sweat past this. So then the next step after that would be to add a sweat sock that Aaron's got over there, which will be under your liner. Um, the one that I use is made by Swiftwick and it goes uh, proximal to my patella. And um, I wear that for the end of the, like, you know, from usually from 12 o'clock on through the rest of the day and that covers my volume issues and sweat issues throughout a normal working day. Aaron. So there's um, what I call heavy sweaters and light sweaters. So uh, I myself was a heavy sweater, my sister is a light sweater. So sometimes we have to implement more things for perspiration. So these are just some other tidbits. So uh, Chris mentioned a sweat sock. So he uses a sealing system often and so he wears a shorter length sweat sock so that his liner is actually gripping to his skin. Because if he had a full length sweat sock on, his liner would be on sweat sock most of the way. So he likes to have, I think, more of your liner on your oh, skin. Yeah. Uh, the sweat socks come in different lengths. These are the ones with the stripes are a little tighter. They make a really loose one that's not very tight at all. It's the most comfortable, it's shorter. It's an ALV style. We have some here, just don't have one right here. Um, so those are very handy. So if the only problem you'll have with those, if you are wearing a pin lock is sometimes it just creates too much movement with a pin lock system because those are typically anchored with just a pin so it can rotate on the pin. So what are some options? Well, um, we have some people, uh, Jack, this is a Jack Richmond special that do something just as simple as put a headband up above. They'll pull it up on their thigh first and roll their line, liner up. And if it goes above the liner, it kind of works like it does on your face and catches the sweat from going in your eyes. So it catches some of the sweat because gravity pulls it down into your liner. Simple thing, uh, you know, 99 cents at the dollar store. It doesn't hurt to try these. Some people do all of these. This is a material called a sham wow. It's written on here somewhere. This one was made in Germany. So this is a different material, but here they carry any of these at Walmart. This is a car chamois. They're super absorbent. So what we will have people do, they're a little rough on your skin, sometimes you wanna wash them a couple of times, is set a cup down, like a coffee cup, take a Sharpie and trace a circle, cut that circle out, put that in the bottom of your liner, and then roll your liner up. And that can be a super handy little trick for soaking up sweat. Some people will use a lot of these, honestly. Some people will use the antiperspirant, a sweat sock, a shamwell, and a headband. Now another, another kind of like deal breaker. Okay, we've been talking about below the knee a lot, but above the knee, um, these spandex underwear are super crucial because you are gonna have an area where the liner is gonna be right against what we call native skin, skin that's just never had anything on it. And that's hard to get it to break in. You can try lubricants and lotion the best thing we found is some type of spandex underwear, there's multiple types, Target, Walmart, Jockey, um, something with a higher percentage of uh, spandex is better. Definitely no cotton, cotton is rotten. So we're looking for something that's only polyester and spandex. A minimum we recommend is 15% spandex. It's just gonna make it tighter and more form fitting. For transfemoral amputees, it just keeps extra tissue from getting pinched in the socket. So those are crucial. So then what you would do is put the spandex underwear on first. So when you roll your liner up, if you're wearing one as a trans above the amputee, then the liner is actually, the edge of the liner is on the bottom border of these underwear instead of on your skin. So those are some common little tidbits. 
Chris, when you have problem areas come up on your leg, what are some common um, little, I'm going to call them maintenance issues that maybe once every few months pop up? Um, you ever I'll, have like ingrown hairs yeah, sometimes? I'll have ingrown hairs. Um, what do you do for those? Do you find it helps? I put some kind of uh, moisturizer lotions, something that'll keep it from where the liner's not sticking to it all day long okay. and just kind of help it move. Uh, I, I clean my leg with Hippoclins. I clean my liner right. with Hippoclins. So that's what we're going to show you is that's Hippoclins. So it has uh, CHG. Is, you can find that anywhere. It's chlorohexagluconate. It's just a brand name. But we call this persistent protection. Normal soap stays has a binder that stays in your skin about two hours. Hippoclins has the CHG as the binder, so it stays on your skin about 10 to 12 hours. So it just gives you longer protection from bugs and stuff. And you can use it daily. So Chris, being a ginger, uh, I use it daily. <laughs> use it daily. Um, some of our long-term athletes, uh, Daryl here uses that daily too. He's using two prosthetics too, so that creates a little bit different issues because there's no good leg to offload everything with. That's a great uh, tip. We found that work, works well for a lot of people. What other kind of maintenance daily things have you found to help with avoiding problems? Um, you know, the, the biggest thing for me is just managing the sweat and, and keeping it as clean as I can. And the HIVA cleanse uh, has, has kept it very, very clean to me. I, I would still recommend cleaning with alcohol. Um, but uh, the spray deodorant was the by far the bigger thing for me. I mean, like, like there's some, um, like the monostat that we use here for some patients just to kind of get away from. Uh, that doesn't create as much lotion in there. So the lotion creates a lot of residue because that's a powder gel. Yeah. So for all the guys out there, if you want the uh, manly version, you want to go for fresh balls, that's the same thing. <laughs> that's right. Yes. So I did. What do you think about hair removal, Chris? I know that some people, you know, and, and you know, opinions are opinions. That we, we don't, I don't ever want to say anything's completely wrong, but I'm just curious what your take on because um, a lot of amputees ask about that. Laser hair removal, shaving, uh, so clipping, at, all that. Another problem of being a ginger, you cannot do laser hair removal. Uh, oh. Your hair is too light. Um, so I have done... For the light therapy that they use? Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So I, I have used Nair, and uh, I liked it if, if you're... Uh, if you use Nair, we have tried a few versions. This is the one we found is the most skin-friendly to use. Yes. Yeah, I, I've tried two versions, and this this one was way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you try the other one we had here? I tried the other yeah, one. Yeah, that was a little... I, 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 tried, I tried, like, the man one, and it was... Uh, you it, needed the woman one? I needed the woman one, because <laughs> yeah. uh, it, 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 killed, it, it killed everything it touched. You <laughs> needed the more sensitive skin. Version. Yeah. So that one actually, uh, that's good feedback. This that one, one actually has worked the best This one is ones. good, yeah. This is, uh, I have used this, and it is good. It's a little, for whatever reason, uh, you know, the coronavirus is lock down crazy things, rubbing alcohol. That has been one of the things that's been super hard to find here during all of this pandemic stuff. So we can, if anybody has a question, you can email or Facebook or whatever you do, and uh, we can send you a link to it too. But like, it, it'll cut down on sweat. Um, Doing the nair helps with the sweat? It definitely helps with the sweat. Like when I was, you know, a long time ago, like when I was training for the marathon or in the half marathon, I. I was using the nair on, yeah. on, on my leg, and it okay. definitely cut down on sweat. Um, you know, just the biggest thing is is maintenance after that is, is ingrown hairs, and the best way to do that is just apply a little bit of moisturizer, chafing gel, and uh, straight in is what I used. Now, if you find that patients sometimes have a more of a problem with the edges of their socket when it's a hard edge to the socket? Uh, Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, do you think like some people don't? I know they they come to us, they don't have this, but you recommend that they get some kind of uh, flex winter. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that they have this experience the flex winter. Yeah, at least just, once. it keeps the edges from being such a rough transition point to where the flexible inner will kind of flex out when you put a little weight on it. Because the reality is, you're going to be putting a lot of pressure on a prosthesis for long periods of time. And what we have found is, no matter how good you are with all this stuff these top areas are where the biggest pressure difference is and you could be in the same socket for four years and I know Chris has experienced this to actually after three years of no problems start to develop a boil back in some of these regions mm -hmm. just from having a constant high pressure spot there and then we have to just move the trim line a half inch up or a half inch down and then just managing that. Have you ever used, um, so if you've ever had like a little break in your skin, uh, blister, 
say you just miss a day with sweat management and you get a little crack or blister, what would you do with that? Band-aid and just keep I, going? Yeah, or? I would just put a Band-aid on it. Um, okay. I, I, I haven't I haven't really used the, the new skin. Um, so some patients, Chris has pretty normal pathology, but if you know you don't do well with um, bandages on your skin, you know some people have wounds that require chronic bandaging for months at a time. Months at a time. Then, and as long as it's not a very deep wound, there's a few products we've really found that work very well. So new skin is like a liquid bandage, and if it's a superficial kind of stage one or zero wound, that's literally just a blister. Um, and not any deeper than that, then this is an excellent product. Just put on and make let it dry for, you know, a minute to five minutes. Make sure it's dry before you put everything back on. And that, that will usually stay in place about three days. Um, and then when it starts to crack and peel off, when you need to apply another coat if it's not healed yet, then um, these blister pads from Band Aid, if it's a little bit deeper wound or more cracking, are all are also very very good. They just create a little more moisture. So. We try to be simple minded with wound care. If it's too wet, get it dry. If it's too dry, then it can be moist kind of thing. So if you have a wound that is a little deeper and it needs a little more protection from everything, then this can be better, but it also has a side effect of retaining some moisture. So those have just been some really simple go-tos. I think that routine Chris mentioned with the Hippoclans, the antiperspirant, um, is good. The antiperspirant deal, I will tell you, uh, spray on is better than a roll on, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's just hard to keep it from kicking up. And with your spray on, the more aluminum, the more it's going to fight perspiration. Yep. So this one's 24%. That's why we recommend this one. Um, it's got a high percentage of aluminum. If your skin is a little more sensitive, you may not be able to tolerate the aluminum. You may have to find one that's a little less for the aluminum. There are, you know, prosthetic antiperspirants by Alps. Um, they're not nearly as much as this as far as the uh, aluminum if but try what works for you i mean there's no absolutely perfect way to do it. we just want to pass along some tips and tricks i've used that and i've used the degree 48 hour and they, they both have worked good for me so if you guys have any questions um let us know i don't know if josh is doing a prize for the best question you get a free pair of socks i'm not sure you'll have to ask josh. <laughs>